My name is Vilna Westlazen and we are here at the Queen's Medical Research Institute at the University of Edinburgh. We recently published a paper in the journal Physiology stating how to quantify human urinary exosomes in solution. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you a comparison between the old traditional methods and our newly developed method. Traditional methods of um, working with exosomes or trying to measure exosomes, quantify exosomes, is usually a whole host of steps that needs to be taken. So it's very time consuming and laborious to do that. The traditional conventional ways of quantifying and isolating nanoparticles are extremely laborious, really time consuming, so it requires an ultrafugation, a centrifugation step um, to um, condense down the nanoparticle pellet and then to quantify it uh, is based on a combination of protein uh, chemistry, essentially looking for characteristic markers or, and size and appearance uh, criteria based on electron microscopy. Um, so you need a lot of specialist equipment, it takes a long time to do and at best it is semi-quantitative. And really we wanted to look at a new approach because in order to um, uh, capitalise on the potential of exosomes uh, for biomarkers and for treatment, you needed something that was very rapid. Now that we've finished the Western blood, we can show you our method of quantifying human urinary exosomes using the nanoparticle tracking analysis system. What NTA does is it relates the size of a particle to its Brownian movement in solution. And we've developed an antibody specific labeling system so we can only track those proteins of interest in whole urine samples using the fluorescence filter mode on the NTA system. What we have to do in the first instance is make dilutions of our urine sample and our Q dots. The Q dots are at a working concentration of one molar, so we dilute it down to one in a thousand and we again dilute this down into our sample and into one in a thousand. Quantum dot or Q dot is a nanocrystal with a very intense fluorescence. It's very stable to use and it doesn't photobleach and you can also conjugate it to any antibody of your choice. We usually incubate between 15 to 30 minutes before we do our NTA measurement. Then we take about 0.3 milliliters, so 300 microliters of solution, inject it into the chamber and then wait for that nice straight line to show you that the laser is now properly in place. Now we are ready to do our actual NTA measurement and as you can see on the screen we have the reference line showing to the left of the line the thumbprint which is very bright in this instance and but to the right of it there is our actual sample. So this is just to align yourself with where your sample is. We usually do a light scatter video in the first instance. This is just to give us an idea of how heterogeneous our sample is. We firstly check our screen gain and the detection threshold. So if we look over on, on this screen, um, we can see all the different um, size particles that is being tracked. And just to remind you, this is in light scatter mode. So it's tracking all the particles between zero to 900 nanometers. For the fluorescence mode, it has a 565 long pass filter. You can see on our X axis this time around, we only see particle size between 0 to 100 nanometers. So this falls into what we expect. So we're only looking at our exosomal population instead of the whole um, population found in urine. And showing that we are able to track only fluorescently labelled exosomes in the urine sample. Now that we've um, compared the old traditional ways of quantifying exosomes by Western blood compared to our new um, nanoparticle tracking analysis method, we can now see that using Western blots, um, it takes about a day, compared to our uh, method of NTA analysis taking a couple of minutes. Wilner's continued this work and her latest data show that these packets of information that are contained within the nanoparticles are taken up by other cells. We know that the kidney will take up these particles and change the cell behaviour. Um, physiologically that's intriguing, but therapeutically if you can replace the content of the cell with a drug or a, a, an RNA gene therapy for example, you can then very specifically target uh, treatment to injured cells. 
I found it to develop this new technique was quite scary in a way because you have to think completely out of the box in a way and you have to just try it and have a go and see what you get. And I think if I have to encourage people to try and answer a new question or an old question even or improve on something that's been going on, then I'd say just, just have the courage and, and try.